At Ainsbury C of E Primary School in St Neots, a Stage 5 Maths lesson is starting. So what we're going to do to warm ourselves up today, Year 5, is we're going to be playing a game. Today's lesson is all about problem solving with addition and subtraction. The teacher uses an activity from Enrich, 20 divided into 6, to introduce learners to the idea of problem solving in mathematics. The aim of the activity is to create six piles from 20 cards. Each pile has to add up to the same total. to organise these into six piles so that the total in each pile is the same. To start with, the teacher simplifies the activity. She demonstrates an easier version by creating only three piles from six cards. One add two is three. This is really easy math. One add two is three. Three add four is seven. Five add six is eleven. Have I got equal totals in those three boxes? No. no. What I need to this allows the class to quickly and confidently familiarise themselves with what they're required to do. The aims of the lesson are to use the 20 divided into 6 activity to introduce different ways of problem solving in maths and to encourage all learners to actively engage with the idea of problem solving in maths. There's no point planning a lesson unless you're responding to where the children are. So you can't plan too far in advance because you might not know where they are in a particular area of math. So really this activity was planned having done already lessons in addition and subtraction and being able to get a good grasp on where the children were. As learners take part in the 20 divided into 6 activity, the teacher brings the class together to explore their initial ideas. Taylor managed to put a total of 30 into each box with different cards. The then she had some numbers left over. Can you remember what were the numbers or could you read out for me, Taylor, the numbers that you had left over? We had 3 and 7, mm -hmm. 2 and 8 and 6 and 4. What can you tell me about those numbers, Taylor? They all added up to 10 which in total gave me 10 and 10 and 10 more, which was 30. 30. So we've got 30 more to add in. Camille, you've got 30 more to add in. Explain to me what you added, told me about how you needed to know what went in each box. We need to add five in each box. Why? So, like, um... To make it 35 in each box, because that's the only way it works. 35 in each box. And you think that that is the total that we are looking for in each box. Another learner chooses a different way to tackle the problem. 1 and 19 is 20, 2 and 18 is 20, 3 and 17 is 20, 4 and 16 is 20, 5 and 15 is 20, 6 and 14 is 20, 7 and 13 is 20, 8 and 12 is 20, 9 and 11 is 20, but two numbers we and then 20 and nothing is 20, but the only um, number we had left was 10. Okay, hold the 10 and the 20 back. Keep those out of the way. How many groups of 20 have you got? Um, Let's see if Jessie's strategy comes up with the same total that Camille and Taylor. Nine lots of 20, which gives us a total of... Is that... Come on, 90. Good boy. Nine twenties are 180. What have you got left over? Which two digit cards couldn't 10 you... 10 and 20. Add 10... That Add 210. Good boy. 210. So we know that the total of add 1, add 2, add 3, all the way up to add 20 is going to come to 210. I need to split that 210 over 6 boxes equally. What calculation would I do to split 210 into 6 equal boxes? Jessie, I don't think I can not ask um, you. 
210 divided by 6. 210 divided by 6. How many sixes in 210? It's an opportunity to share progress and helps the teacher to understand which learners need more guidance. The second method activity is taken from the Enrich website, which is um, really good for us in school because it encourages children lots of activities on there for them to really apply their knowledge and practice and consolidate skills. So today I chose that activity by really looking to see what would um, complement the addition and subtraction we've been doing over the last few days um, and homed in on the number on the activity 20 into 6 because that has been mapped for the stage 5 curriculum. Once I'd got the activity then obviously I had to look at it and see whether or not it was accessible for all the children in my class and you'd have noticed that the lower ability children I did obviously have to modify it down slightly so they were just having um, the numbers 2 to 10 to use for their activity. The theme of problem solving continues and the teacher finds out how another learner solves the problem of 20 divided into 6. One unit, that was wrong. Oh, how annoying. But then, I didn't think that these units would add up to 35. And do they? Yeah. Well done. The teacher introduces the idea that there are many ways to solve a problem in maths. Yes, because what I'm going to ask you now, is this the only possible solution there is? Or do you think there's another solution? Because when there's a challenge, there's worth a try to get it right. Okay, right, well I'm going to ask you to record that in your math book. I want you to stick this in and then record the way that you've solved it. And then we're going to have a think about if you've got the only solution or if there's no solution. <laughs> Problem solving is really important in maths in terms of encouraging children to start to explain, to generalise, to reason, to justify. All of those higher order thinking skills which obviously go across the curriculum can be really enhanced in maths learning. Um, we do a lot of teaching from a kind of problem solving angle and it does really benefit the children because it's, thinking about, it's the thinking about thinking. <laughs> Add nine. What does that make? Ten. That makes so that and that is thirteen. Add ten to twenty-three. Twenty-three add four to two. But no, okay, do this one then, because we've already used the seventeen, so we're only allowed to use one. So do ten add nine nineteen and add one is five. There was twenty-five. 25. Something was like really hard and then when you did it, it was like yes I did it and then it was challenging which makes it like really like good. The teacher evaluates the lesson and shows how the activity can be used to judge the progress of individual learners and how learners can build confidence in mathematics by working together. I think the dialogue that goes on between the children is really important. If a child is encouraged to explain their thinking, then actually they start to internalise it and um, really get to grips with the understanding. We do a lot of explanation, discussion, paired work, and that seems to benefit both the higher and lower attainers. Are you going to be able to build up to 20 with the numbers you've got left over? No. So, could you revise? The first total you've decided on. Right. Um, um, yeah. Go on then. Right. So yes. Yeah. We need to make all these all. You make 20, 20 and five minus five there was 25. 25. And what was this? That's, that's um, 32. 32. So what was that again? Really, it's looking for the children, what sort of strategies that they're employing once they actually come to the final edition. Have, are they looking at the numbers that they've got in front of them and thinking, oh yeah, this would be an appropriate strategy to choose. So have they got near doubles? Have they look, looking for their number ones to ten? Um, are they partitioning their numbers? So it's really looking at sort of addition methods that they're already comfortable with and where they still need to help. Let's have a think and let's test out if there is more than one. Melissa, the box you have which has got the number 16 in it, have a look at it. What digits have you got with the number 16? 14, 4 and 1. 
Melissa has made it 14, 4 and 1. So this was how Melissa made 35 in that box. Camille, have a look at your box where you've got 16 in the box. Can you read out what digits you've got with it? Just 19. So Camille and Taylor have used their 16 with their 19. So they haven't used the 14 with the 16, which means they must have used it. So there's more than one solution. To find out more about Cambridge Primary Maths, contact us.